Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Right here in Matthew chapter 11, it says, Jesus answered and said unto them, verse 4, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Heavenly Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Father, to seal this word to our heart today. Lord, I pray that you anoint this message to bring conviction to the hearts of your children. All of your children who will hear this, Lord. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus, the name above all names, that you would rectify the wrongs in your body, Lord. That you would make the crooked places straight. And that you would crush down and throw down every work of the flesh, the world, and the devil in the body of Christ, even this night. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to see this, what this means to be offended. Shall not be offended. Blessed is he. Blessed is he. Happy. Well off is he who shall not be offended in me. This is what Jesus Christ said. Now, you might say to me, John, I'm not offended in anything Jesus says. I'm not offended. But wait a minute. What if I come and tell you what Jesus is saying? Do you get offended because I have a beard? Do you get offended because I raise my voice? Do you get offended because uh, the truth is cutting you hard? Revealing sin or sinful ways or moral depravity in your life? Do you get offended then? Because you don't like the messenger? You'd rather Kenneth Copeland or Benny Hinn tell you or something? See, people are offended in the Lord today when his messengers are speaking the truth to them. The truth, the bold truth. And then the people will tell you, speak the truth to me, brother. Speak the truth to me, sister. And then you speak the truth to them, and they clam up. They become your enemy. They, they get offended at what you're saying. This, this is in the body of Christ. You see it on YouTube. People are always, you'll see them, you'll hear them say, I, I hope, I don't, I don't really want to offend anybody. I don't want to offend anyone. I, I don't, well, what is this? What is this? This is model coddling people. You know, let's model coddle the wicked in their sin. Yeah, let's model coddle those who persist in their sinful ways, model, coddle them. And see if that will bring them to Jesus. See if that will help them walk in the ways of the Lord. Look what Jesus said. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Jesus Christ said, what did he say? He said, he that receiveth you, receiveth me. This is what he said. See, we preach nothing but the truth here. We're going to pre preach the truth and give you the truth. Hallelujah. Look right here in the book of Luke. Hallelujah. I'm going to turn over there. Oh, hallelujah to the King of Kings. Jesus said, Blessed are ye when men shall hate you. Oh, yeah, we've been there. We're there today. People hate us. And when they shall separate you, separate you from their company. Uh-huh. Yeah. And shall reproach you. Uh-huh. And cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day. And leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. Now i got to turn over here. I believe it's chapter 10. Hallelujah. Oh, Luke 10. Here it is. Luke 10. Jesus pronouncing a judgment. Because people weren't repenting. People were not repenting. People knew they were doing wrong and they were not repenting. 
Jesus Christ came in with the truth. He came in with healing. He came in with signs and wonders. Showing that he's the almighty God. Listen to what he says here. He's talking to his disciples. Hallelujah. He says, But into whatsoever city you enter and they receive you not, go your ways out into the streets of the same of the same and say, Even the very dust, even the very dust of your city which cleaveth on us, which sticks to our shoes, we do wipe off against you, notwithstanding. Be ye sure of this that the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. See, when you're speaking the truth to people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're preaching the gospel, you're ministering to the saints, you're doing it in the name of the Lord. The kingdom of God is within us. It's flowing out of us. Hallelujah! Praise God. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable on that day. Woo! Listen to verse 12 here of chapter 10. Now these, this, is, this is for all the people out there in the world today. Jesus Christ his red letters, he's speaking to you. This is a principle. God has shown forth his mighty works in this earth since the resurrection of Jesus after he died on the cross for our sins, rose from the dead. The Holy Spirit came down on the day of Pentecost. Jesus Christ went around doing good, healing all the oppress of the devil. So did the apostles. And then religion crept in. But all through the centuries, God has had his people. Proclaiming the faith, the truth, the life, the way, the Lord Jesus. And many people in the church reject Jesus Christ. They reject the truth of the cross. You bring the truth to them. You bring, you tell them, they say they want to know what's happening. You, you get discernment from the Lord. You get a word from the Lord for people and you share it with them. And they reject it. They reject it. Because they say you're not loving them. No, what it is, you're not model coddling them is what it is. We don't model coddle nobody. We speak the truth to people. We do it in love. And many times it'll it'll go by step, step by step by step by step. Because the Holy Spirit's wanting to woo people. He's, he, the Holy Spirit, He wants to be gentle with us and when He convicts us that we would repent. But if, he, if we don't repent, if we're doing something wrong against what the Holy Spirit has shown us, and we don't repent, then the Holy Spirit steps it up a little bit. Gets a little more stern with us. This is how it works. I'm telling you right now. We know from experience this is how it works. But Jesus, he, he's, he's telling these apostles, these 70, he sent out the 70, two by two. Now look here what he says. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable on that day for Sodom than for that city. Woe unto thee, Chorazan, and unto thee, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works had been done in Tyre, in Sidon, which had been done in you, they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in, in the, at the judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, Capernaum was a big city right on the coast. Beautiful city, big giant buildings. They had, oh, it was beautiful. One of the greatest cities in the Middle East at the time. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted to heaven, shalt be thrust down to hell. That's what Jesus said. And there's many people today that Jesus is going to thrust down to hell. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. He that heareth you, heareth me. This is what Jesus, listen to what Jesus said here. Listen to what he said. He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. Do we believe the word? I believe it. I know my wife believes it. I know many of you believe the word. You say you believe the word. You follow the word. Are you? Look what it says here in 1 Corinthians 13, 6. I'm going to turn over there. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 6. And we know that's the love chapter. Oh, one of the most famous chapters for the love gospel. They love chapter 13. But I'm telling you right now, it's, it's a hard chapter. I'm telling you, love is love is uh, beautiful. True love's got thorns with it. I'm telling you right now. Look what it says. Though I, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I become as sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Charity, there's agape. It's love, agape. Yeah, that's what it says. 
and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity I am nothing I am nothing and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity it profits me nothing charity suffereth long hallelujah long suffering and is kind charity envieth not it's not jealous true love is not jealous hallelujah charity varneth not itself that's right amen is not puffed up doth not behave itself unseemly seeketh not her own is not easily provoked thinketh no evil rejoiceth not in iniquity it rejoiceth not in iniquity but rejoiceth in the truth see charity rejoices in the truth if someone comes to me and says John the Lord told me to tell you this and they've got the word of the Lord and they, they open up the scripture and they say God told me to give you this word and the Holy Spirit just pierces my heart with that word. He takes his sword in and divides between the joint and the marrow of the soul and the spirit of me. And he separates. And the Holy Spirit in me knows that's a true word. And I reject that word. I'm saying no to the truth. I'm saying no to the Lord. And God forbid I ever do that. Ever. But see, this church today in the Western nations is a model coddled church. They surround themselves with people. No one wants to confront sin with the cross. Okay? The true preaching of the cross will expose the sin in people's lives. It will make them grind their teeth at you. And nobody wants to preach that truth because they don't want to be offending anybody. I'm telling you, it does offend. You see, true love, it, it has thorns. And love is a commitment. We're committed to the truth here in our house. We're committed to speaking what God tells us to speak. And when we're ministering to the saints of God, we tell them what God tells them, what God is wanting to communicate to them. And if you receive the truth, if I receive the truth, we are blessed. We, we get revelation. We get deliverance. We get wonderful, <laughs> praise God, just the love of God flowing through us. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to look that up right there in verse number 6 there. Rejoiceth, but rejoiceth in the truth. Rejoiceth not in iniquity. Two different words for rejoiceth here. Let's look at the first one. Rejoiceth not in iniquity. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. And that word rejoiceth to be full of cheer, calmly happy or well off. Hallelujah. Okay. But rejoiceth in the truth. And that word is to sympathize in gladness, congratulate, rejoice in with, with the truth. Rejoicing in the truth with the truth. Now look at what Paul says here in Galatians 4.16. Am I therefore become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth, I ask you today, are we becoming your enemy because we tell you the truth? Happens all the time, doesn't it? We have fellowship with so many people since our time on the internet. And before that, we fellowship with many people. Our ministry has been more of the one-on-one -on -one or the two-on-two. -on -two to widows and widowers and single people, married people in the Walmarts, in the grocery stores in the Home Depots and Lowe's and all these different various places God has used us to minister to people over the years and on the internet and people come and they're so blessed. They're receiving the truth, receiving the truth, receiving the truth. And bless, 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 bless. And then God will say something to them. That he wants them to do this certain thing. Or God brings conviction to them. They'll share part of their life with us. And then 
will discern there's something going on they'll ask for help what does God want me to do you share with them what the Lord is saying by the word and they don't want to do it so therefore they cut off the fellowship they run the other way and they think they're just leaving you and they're not leaving the Lord but they are leaving the Lord the Lord in us See, we are one body of Christ all of us the true believers are one body of Christ if you come and speak truth to me and, and, and show me the error or something like that if I'm in error about something then I repent you see I don't say get away from me I don't want to hear that see that's bucking up that's saying no to the cross my wife and I we say God examine us every day so that way we're able to minister to you the truth so that you can receive the truth and be blessed because if we reject the truth oh that's that's dangerous ground to be on I mean it's so dangerous especially in this last days I'm telling you right now look we're in the last hour we are in the last hour Paul said am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth enemy right there look at that word enemy hateful to hate actively hostile adversary Satan enemy Paul says, am I become your enemy because I tell you the truth oh man we have people say tell me the truth tell me the truth we tell them the truth they run away and then they start coming against us in the spirit we can feel it God sees it God knows it now I want you to see this right here now look if we don't receive the truth in righteousness from a brother and sister in Christ or a brother or a sister in Christ if we reject the truth that they are speaking to us for whatever reason for I don't care what reason it is it's the truth of the Word of God what people are speaking to you and you reject it then you are holding the truth in unrighteousness and there's there's varied ways and reasons why people do this and they justify it in their own minds and if you know today that you are rejecting the truth that the Lord is bringing forth through this ministry or through other ministries that is is the truth I'm not talking about what the New World Order is doing I'm talking about the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he is doing you reject that truth you are opening yourself up oh, you're saying I do not hold the truth in righteousness okay now one second Thessalonians 2 verse 9 even him who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders lying wonders and with all deceivableness see Satan is coming in those people the body the son of perdition okay all right and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved delivered set free and for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Mm -hmm. And in the literal Greek, it's the lie. Okay? That they are God. Now, why would God do that? That they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. This whole world is rejecting the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ and a vast majority of the church is rejecting the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. A big part of the professors with their mouths and their hearts are far from Jesus are rejecting the truth of the gospel. They're not holding the truth in righteousness. Satan has got a hook in them. 
He's using jealousy. He's using pride. He's using arrogance. He's using money. He's using the things of this world to keep people in unrighteousness. And the Lord says, die to all that. Take up your cross daily and follow me. Will we? We will here. We certainly will. And we long to be with Christ and, and more and more in fellowship with Him each day. Hallelujah. Where our whole life is just totally consumed by the Lord. Hallelujah. While we're gardening, while we're working around mowing, whatever we're doing, dishes or whatever. Judgment is coming. God is going to judge this wicked world. Let us not find ourselves when he does in wickedness, okay? Or uh, aiding and abetting wickedness. See? Let's don't do that. Let's say, Lord, free me from that. Free me, O oh God. Hallelujah. The body of Christ is in a state right now that there's not a whole lot that you can look at and say, oh, that's the spirit flowing right there. There's too many cliques, too many denominations, and Jesus is going to come shake it all right down to the very ground. And it's only what is of Christ that's going to stand. None of the buildings will stand. None of the organizations of men will stand. When God begins to shake heaven, hallelujah, the religious things, it's going to all come down, everything made by man. And that's about 99% of what man has built. I mean, everything man has built up, God's going to throw it down to the ground. He showed me that in the year 2000, 15 years ago. About this time, man, praise God. We started tearing down an old house we bought from a church. And God said, I'm tearing down this church of today. That's what he said. I'm tearing it down to the very ground, to the very foundation, which is Jesus Christ. So all of the little platitudes and the little paradigms, people love that word paradigm. Oh, that came out back in the 90s, I think. Oh, they started using that. New Agers love that word. There's a paradigm shift going on in the spirit. There's this, there's that. They use all these words, you know, to try to make people think there's somebody special. Let me tell you the true paradigm, and that's the cross. Hallelujah. That's the paradigm. Hallelujah. The cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. And to those who are perishing, the cross is foolishness. They don't want the cross. But to those who are saved, it is the power of God. Hallelujah. The word of the cross. Praise God. Father, I pray you seal this word. I pray that it helps those who need it, God. I know there's a lot of people, Lord, out there who are caught up in this world system in one way or another, Lord. And they need deliverance tonight. They're crying out to you for deliverance. God, I pray you give it to them, Lord. Heavenly Father, just meet them tonight. Lord, send your sweet Holy Spirit to them, O oh God. And crush every work of darkness. And throw down the devil's work, O oh God, in their lives. And help your people to get focused on you, Jesus. Don't let us be model coddling anybody, O oh God. Don't let us be uh, patting them on the back and when, when they should be getting punched, Lord. Hallelujah, by your truth. Glory to God. Your truth is a double-edged sword. It goes in and divides between the joint and the marrow and the soul and the spirit. It divides, oh God. It reveals the thoughts, the intents, the motives of the heart. Oh God, bunch of panty waist Christians out there, Lord. Lace on their britches, oh God. Oh God, have mercy on your church in America. Have mercy on your church in Great Britain and France. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Hallelujah. And call your people out of Babylon, the Babylon religion system, Lord. Call them out, oh God. And the economic system and the political system. Call your people, Lord. We're calling them right now in the name of Jesus. You come out of Babylon, saith the Lord. In Jesus' name.